I have a little haul to share. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we had some friends visiting from out of town, and we did a lot of shopping while they were here. There were some specific things they were looking for. So we just kind of ran all over town. And I picked up a few things along the way that I thought I would show you right quick. We went to the Fit Store, which is our Japanese dollar store, similar to a Daiso, if you know what Daiso stores are. And I grabbed just a few little things. These are little, um, you know, like little popsicle sticks, but they're, they're minis. Look. Look how sweet. They're like extra skinny and short and I don't know. I just thought they were fun. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do with them. <laughs> but yeah, okay, there I have it. <laughs> I just felt like I needed them. So, got me some of those. And pins, of course. Can't leave without my pins. Um, this is my favorite Pentel sign pen. I get these from uh, Jet Pens a lot, and I use them a lot because I really like They have a very peculiar nib on them. It's like a brush nib, but it's like a hard brush. It's very difficult to describe, and I like it very, very much. So I got me an extra one of those because I have four and I needed five. Then I got, okay, this Pentel Hybrid. This is one of my favorite pens ever. Hard to find. Uh, at least in single quantities. I think Amazon had them, you know, you can buy like a box of 12. Well, I, don't, I don't want 12. You know, I just want a couple. And really about the only place I can find them here in town is the office supply stores don't have them. They don't carry them on the shelf. I'm sure they could order them for me, but you know, that's just trouble. But the only place I've been able to find them consistently is at Texas Art, down in Montrose. So anytime I'm down there, I drop into Texas Art, and then I grab me some Pentel Hybrid pens, because they have a very skinny tip. This one's a .5. They come in as small as a .25, which is what I really like, but this will do. But I grabbed this red one, because they had colors, and I really didn't know they came in colors. And this is just a fabulous little skinny point pen. One of my favorites. So I got that. And then this one I grabbed because I hadn't seen this kind before. It is a, a Signo erasable pen. Signo is, what is that? Uniball. That's the brand. So let's just see what this is about. Um, so here we go. Uniball, Signo erasable. Ooh, nice fine point. Okay. Yep, yeah, looks good. Comes with a slow eraser. Doesn't erase extremely clean, does it? I really don't care. I don't have much use for an erasable pen, but it's still a decent pen. It's a nice fine point. Writes smoothly and it does have that uh, kind of sort of erasable option if you need it. It really does kind of fail as an erasable ink though because look, you can still see it. So yeah, not impressed with the erasable option, but the pen itself is okay. Okay, that was it for the Fit Store. Now we have, oh, some things I picked up at Hobby Lobby. They had, over on their sale clearance aisle, these acrylic silks, uh, paints, which I have seen recently in some demos and some videos. So I was kind of excited to pick these up and play with them. They're just a very smooth, creamy kind of acrylic paint, but they have special properties that I can't really remember in my head right now. But there's something unusual about them that I liked. Oh well, I'll find the video and, and then I'll be just extra glad that I bought these. <laughs> 
but they're pretty colors. I like them. They were on sale for $4.79 for three uh, containers. So pick me up some of those. And then they had these on sale. These are normally $8.49. They were on sale for five bucks. And it's that Pharaoh's special effects paste, you know, it's that thick kind of metallic texture paste stuff. Well, I'll seal that. But, you know, you know what it is. These things are heavy. Like, I think they have real metal in them or something because they weigh a ton. And then this little thing of modeling cream, which I have one of these that someone gifted to me in a kind of a copper color. So now I've got a gold to go with it. And I have been coveting this paper ever since I first saw it. This is that render no show through paper. And I've wanted some, but it is so dang expensive. This um, 9 by 12 sketch pad of 24 sheets was $12.99 originally. It's like, you know, 50 cents a sheet basically. But it is a. Um, it was on clearance for $7.79, so I got it. But it is a paper that you can use both sides and ink will not sink through. Like Sharpie ink will not sink through. Should I prove it? I guess I should. Let me go get my markers. Okay, I'm still using and loving my marker caddy here. And here are some Sharpies. This blue usually stinks through on everything. No sinky through. Uh, black. Let's just try a variety, shall we? I've got... Let's, paint, let's do this. This is a good fabric marker. Absolutely no sinking through. These are uh, Bix version of a Sharpie. I don't think there's anything that'll sink through. I don't know. I have some pins that have been sinking through and irritating me. Which ones are they? They are these nano liners. I'm not going to buy these again because they've been irritating me. All I have are really, really fine points, and that's almost out of ink. And those are smaller, but do I have a... Nope, I don't. I've been having a real hard time with these. Sinking through everything. But not this. Alright, how about... This one is an oil-based <laughs> marker. I really need to do a jet pens order because, yeah, my inks are, my pens are running low. No sinky through. Um, let's see, what else might sink through? How about all these juicy, these are those uh, Sharpie fabric, uh, ones. And how about a Tria marker? And a uh, Shihan Touch marker? What else 
What else do we have? Here's a black extra wide Copic. Oops. Well, yeah, I think I've almost used this one up. And then let's do a good old uh, pit pen. And nothing. Shows through at all, not even a shadow. So, yeah, this paper works. I have two issues with it. Oh, here, let's do a, let's do paint pen. I did not test a paint pen, I should have. That is really weird. Okay. Help if I tested a paint pen that actually works. So let's do that. Let's find one that actually works. Yeah, well, there we go. And look, I've got this big. One of these, uh, what you call it, Liquitex paint markers. Okay. Even the paint pens didn't sink through. And usually those oil-based paint pens like this, they soak through everything. But it did not. So, anyway, it does work. It does what it says it will. I have two issues with it. One, of course, is the price. It's, you know, about 50 cents a sheet. That's a lot for doodling. Um, for a finished piece of art on it, it's not a lot, but the paper is not true white. And I know you can't see it on my cheap little camera. You can't tell, but it has a grayish cast to it. And I think it's because, I don't know if there is something in the middle, some, you know, like this paper fiber and then the middle layer and then the fiber on the back. And if it's that middle layer that gives it that grayish cast. I mean, it's almost like if you take two thin sheets of computer paper and you put a piece of black cardstock between them, that's what it looks like. You can kind of see the black cardstock underneath the paper. That is what this paper looks like. It's, it's weird. It has almost a parchment finish to it, but it's not an attractive <laughs> parchment finish to me. <laughs> if it was completely smooth and white, I might love it more, but it's not, so I don't. So, okay, there's that. But um, for doing stuff on it using, you know, some heavy duty markers. It's um, it does what it says that it will. So there's that. So I picked that up because I've been dying to try that, but didn't want to pay full price for it. And then my last little thing, we went to a thrift store, and I got two pillowcases, boring white king size pillowcases that I'll actually use on my bed or on my guest bed. But these, I got them for, I think it was $3.25 for the set, and they're 800 thread count. I don't know if you can tell how thick and marvelous these are, but these be some good pillowcases. So, that was well worth $3.25. And I found another leather purse that I got excited and already started taking apart. <laughs> But, okay, you can probably tell how it was. You know, it was one of those, like that. And then it had the, you know, one of these on either side. Um, and this little closure. Yeah, you can see it, right? Basic leather purse. And I knew the leather would be good. It felt like a good kind of heavy leather. And it's that... Um, 
Etienne Onier brand, which these are usually expensive. They're usually over $100. Uh, so I was expecting expecting it to be pretty good, and it is. And But I'm always amazed to see when you start taking these purses apart, even the really good expensive ones, <laughs> you find surprising things in them. This was the inside of the purse, the lining, which I almost always ditch because it's gross. Um, and it fit in there like so. I was really surprised. I paid, what, $10 for this, and it was worth it because it's good leather. But I was really surprised at how much glue and cardboard this one had. There's always a certain amount. There's almost always on the bottom piece of leather. See, this still has a piece of cardboard backing glued to it that I haven't taken off yet because it's going to be a beast. But it had another one. This one sewed onto it. And you can see the somebody's notes, I guess. So there's always a fair amount of cardboard in your expensive designer <laughs> leather purse that you should probably know about. <laughs> um, okay, this has probably got DNA or something on it that I don't want, so put that aside. And there's also some uh, interfacing and see look more this is okay this was around the top this piece of paper which is connected to this uh, this is a fusible sticky interfacing that was in here it was around like that and then this was in here this was stuck to the leather part I guess for stability or whatever but it left the leather sticky. I mean, that stuff was so strong. And you can see, I didn't get all of it off. I couldn't. I did best I could, but that stuff was just incredibly sticky. So I'm going to have to uh, hit it with my heat gun, probably, to get the rest of this off. But it still, it left, even the clean parts are tacky. So... That's not a huge deal, you know, I will just have to, and I would anyway, if I make, my intention is to make some kind of book or something out of it, I will line it with some paper or some different fabric or something, um, and the sticky will come in handy because it's already kind of sticky, but it was interesting to me because you just never know what you're going to find in these purses, and, and how they're constructed is just always fascinating to me. So I'm not sure how this one's going to go yet, but I mean, if I just undo these seams, that's two good journals right there. And I can still use these for some kind of closures or something. And then I have the this thingy I can do something with because I pulled that off. So there's that. Or that. I don't know. I don't. So yeah, anyway, I don't know. But... Ten bucks, uh, good leather, not a whole bunch of little seams, which kind of irritate me, and then the always surprising amount of cardboard and paper and interfacing that's sewn into it. Yucky. Okay. So, there we go. I think that is all from a haul. Uh, yep, I've got a... I know at least one more video to do, so I'm going to try to get that done. And until then, the end.